It's a delight to be here, but I do have one disclosure. I am a medical oncologist. I do not have a PhD. And for me, technology is a little bit like changing oil in my car. I drive it in the Jiffy Lube and drive it out, but I got the results that, that I need to, to drive my, my car. In cancer medicine, over the past four years, there's been a transformation in treatment and diag diagnosis with aminotherapy and the evolution of liquid biopsies. And I will go over how Circular Gene has implemented MSI testing with our liquid biopsies, but also give a clinical impact of why MSI testing is important. This is a patient who got the right test the right result and the right treatment. And an exceptional responder just received the right treatment. Early on, this is a 44 year old, the right treatments without any precision guidance, things were getting worse. He has a, not MSI, but a pole mutation. And once that was identified, he started on an immune checkpoint blockade and now this is ongoing for two plus years. Without the right result, there would not be the right treatment. And MSI has followed a similar path over the past two decades. 20 years ago, we knew MSI had no definite benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy, but not statistically so. And this was from the New England Journal 2003, and we didn't even list hazard ratios back then. But then it became important. It became important to know what the MSI status of your patient was so that you would not do the wrong thing. This is the magic trial of perioperative chemotherapy and resected gastric cancer. Of the MSI patients, if you had surgery alone, you did much, much better than by adding chemotherapy. Small numbers, but what a dramatic difference. You need to know MSI to know what not to do. And then the evolution evolved of knowing what to do. Now this is the NSABP trial of adjuvant chemotherapy in colon cancer. The overall conclusion of the trial was that adding bevacizumab did not make a difference, but when the tumor biology was looked at, and tumor biology is not a post hoc subset, tumor biology is the ultimate prospective finding of precision oncology. When they looked at the MSI status, there was a benefit of adding bevacizumab to chemotherapy. But then it really changed in 2015 on. And that is when immune checkpoint blockade just exploded at, at ASCO. Beyond melanoma, beyond kidney cancer, to lung cancer, across all solid tumors. And we no longer talk about what was the median with that 50th person out of 100 that is not relevant to the other 99. We talked about the durability of the right side of the curve. And this was in colon cancer and this was other cancers. Then it became vitally important to know the MSI status, to know what to do. Because this is something that you absolutely could not miss on an individual. This became the first tissue agnostic treatment indication. MSI status, irrespective of tissue, pembrolizumab, which is one of the anti-PD-1 checkpoint inhibitors, had FDA approval two years ago. But it's also tissue agnostic in that you cannot clinically predict who will be MSI high and who will not. This is just the cancer genome at atlas of looking at the MSI status. And yes, endometrial cancer, colon cancer, stomach cancer, yeah, uveal melanoma, germ cell, nasal pharyngeal, and a lot of liquid tum tumors not. but you cannot predict. And 1% is 100% for that one person. You absolutely have to test and know what the MSI status, to know what not to do because they do poorly with chemotherapy, and to know what to do because they can 
have dramatic durable treatment benefit with immune therapy. Then it became the problem with tissue. Tissue has phylogenetic heterogeneity, it has immune microenvironment heterogeneity, it has homologous repair deficiency heterogeneity, and this is looking at even MSI will have tissue heterogeneity. And this is an old study, 1995, of non-small cell lung cancer. 55% of the metastatic sites were MSI high by the testing done back then. Only 12% of the primary tumor. Now, if the primary tumor was MSI high, the metastatic site was, but the metastatic site could be positive and the primary tumor could not be MSI high. And then you would end up not having sufficient information and you could end up making the wrong treatment decision. This is probably one of the most, trans most seminal studies of tissue heterogeneity. It was talked about at ASCO this past June, just published in Nature medicine, and it was 42 patients with progressed GI cancers, and they looked at Mass General and the Broad Institute looked at the intratumoral heterogeneity. Now, there were a lot of autopsies to look at things, but when they looked at biopsies, this site, this site, one had this mutation, one had the other, but they did not have both, where plasma had both. The, the same thing within different tumor, within different compartments. Here, but not there. This one, but not that one, but plasma had both. And even within three different liver biopsies, there was a dramatic difference of what the mutational status was. To me, this clearly reflected that a liquid biopsy can identify heterogeneity within the overall tumor burden of an individual. And then everybody talks about cost. Liquid biopsies cost too much. When you look at a tissue biopsy, you have to factor in not just doing the test, but the acquisition of the test. And this was a study from SEER data looking at rebiopsies upon progression because you needed and wanted to know what the molecular status was. And within 30 days, even a simple FNA was $6,000 with complications, pneumothorax, bleeding, you're in the hospital, that jacks it up big time. So when you compare cost of liquid and tissue, you have to factor in acquisition cost, and clearly a liquid biopsy is cheaper, less costly than tissue. Well, this is our, our circular gene approach, and this is a proprietary technology of not extraction, but of an enrichment called linear in situ amplification where there's not cell-free DNA loss. It's less labor intensive, it's easily automated with the high throughput, and it can be done on four to five mLs of plasma. And when you talk about blood tests, if you're in the medical world, when you're having blood drawn, you can't use the central line because that may damage the cell-free DNA. It has to be a native vein. One tumor blood is much, much better than two to three tubes of blood for the lab personnel, for, for an individual. Just the fear of just think every week you have to get a blood draw. They're having trouble, get it. They have to do it three to four times. But a small volume can be a huge quality of life benefit for an individual. And our approach is we do NGS on the liquid biopsy, both buffy coat and plasma on everybody, and that's on the ion torrent, and then the microsatellite fragments on the SAC studio. And that turnaround is within, within five days. We opt to do it 
upon my insistence of all solid tumors because you absolutely do not know unless you test for it and you do not know unless you know and you have to know because you cannot miss if MSI is there because it's a radical in impact on an individual's outcome. Liquid biopsies, liquid biopsies for MSI, it overcomes the limitations of tissue heterogeneity. You know you're going to get a result. Tissue acquisition oftentimes and probably 20, 30 percent of the time, it's insufficient tissue to do whatever you want to do with the, the tissue beyond the pathologist looking at it. it. It is less costly. It's a simple blood draw that you control. You don't have to request that the pathology department send something out that they may not send out and they may send out the wrong block. And you can get it back quickly because time to treatment matters. This is a study on metastatic lung cancer in follow-up upon progression, either a web-based reporting of symptoms, patient reported outcomes, or compared to what would be the standard. You have your appointment in two to three months, we're busy, let's do this to try to, try to de delay having to get somebody in. But when the patients became symptomatic, they reported it and they started, and this was chemotherapy, this was before immune therapy. And the cancer looked the same. The progression-free survival was no different. But look at the overall survival dramatically different because the quicker you start treatment, the quicker you turn off the tumor activity and the quicker the balance turns in favor of, of an individual. So the cancer doesn't look different, but by golly, they live longer. And there's a second study that confirmed the same thing. So even in stage four lung cancer, time to treatment matters. And this is why it matters and is why we, all, we blend NGS with MSI, because more and more co-mutations are defining better subsets that are enriched and will respond better. Now, ignoring the whole issue of tumor mutational burden, but when MSI metastatic colorectal and high TMB in whatever definition and that's what a Kaplan-Meier curve is. It's either 100% or 0%. On here, there's mean, this means that 60% are down to 0%, only 40 are up at the 100%. But you can, make a, you can enrich a subset and really focus on how do we better treat those individuals because th this matters. Everything we all do in this room, the, the technology, running the test, getting the res results, improving the technology. Advances in technology are important as we advance treatment because it matters to everybody we take care of. Every person with cancer, you look in their eye, their family eyes are piercing you. How long am I going to live? I want to live long and well. And with precision oncology and with advances in technology, liquid biopsy and MSI, patients are living longer and better. Thank you.